What should the first question be? Well, you know I arranged everything. <laughs> what you mean arranged? I directed all this life, you know. This matter how y'all met, this is about me. Hey, this leading up to you. back to my channel it's your girl queen javon and if you're not subscribed to the j game stop what you're doing and hit that red subscribe button down below you won't be disappointed baby so today i'm doing a story time on how my cousin adopted me when i was four months old i know i know y'all been waiting on this story for some time now i was supposed to tell this story when i hit a thousand subscribers and that was like what almost two years ago and i actually filmed this video and i did it with my biological parents but it was so weird like it was so awkward because my biological mom she is so shy and my dad y'all already know how he is and it was all about him we the it got the whole topic it wasn't even nothing about me it was about him how he grew up and everything i said daddy you must want to do a documentary because this this not about you <laughs> like he was just i don't know so i'm gonna add some clips from that video into this one so you can just see their point of view because i'm like that video is not giving <laughs> it's not i'm like it's off subject it's just it was not given what it's supposed to give. I was born May 30th, 1995. Girl, it's a Gemini. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and I was born at Grady Memorial Hospital. <laughs> Just to pop it up. So I was born, I was born at Grady, but my mom, she was in jail when she had me. So when it was time for me to be released, my dad, he came and got me from the hospital. My daddy, he didn't know nothing about seeing about no baby, no nothing. And my cousin who raised me, who I call mom now, she saw me, she was like, oh, this baby, like, what you doing with that baby, uncle? Like, what you finna do? He was like, I don't know. So he actually took me to my auntie Tawana house. My auntie, she already had two kids before the one she had before me. My cousin and I, we literally only, what, nine months apart and she was like i can't do this i have three babies it's just i just cannot so my auntie was like girl come get your baby so my cousin she went to her house and she had me for about two months before my mom got released from jail and so i was with my mom for about two months and then when i was four or five months my cousin, she um, got me back. And from that point on, she went to the courts. She got legal guardianship of me, adopted me, everything she needed to do so I could be in a stable home. And the reason why my biological mama couldn't see about me physically is because she was on drugs. She was addicted to um, drugs really bad at the time. I don't feel right really calling her my cousin. Even though she is my cousin, I don't feel right saying it because that's all I know and that's my mother, that's my mom, she's my everything. I love that lady with every bone in my body. So I'm just gonna call her mom in this story and biological mom for um my real mom. I don't remember, you know, when you at a young age, you don't remember stuff, but from stories that my mom would tell me, she was like, yeah, your mom, she will come by and see you. She'll spend the whole day with you. She'll do this, she'll do that. But of course, I don't have no memory of it. But yeah, she would she would come around. But every time I would go around family members or college park or whatever, they said, oh, you look just like your mama. Oh, you look just like her. You look just like her. Oh, I'm thinking they say I look like my cousin. I don't, it wasn't clicking that they were saying that I look like my biological mama. They'll say her name, but honey, that wasn't registering to me. It was just like, okay, I'm thinking they just saying I look like who. Cool. So once I got of age, my mom, she told me the story. And I'm just like, oh, okay, you know, but it just like, mm, it, it just didn't click. 
But once I got older, it was like, I could, I could see it more. The only thing that I remember as a child when it comes to my biological mom and like actually seeing her and you know, just like really like, oh, this, this who they talking about is when I was around eight or 10. I've always went to stay with my dad like during the weekends or sometime. And I was riding my bike. And then this lady came out of nowhere. She's like, Gabriel, Gabriel. And then he came out. And then he was like, that's Penny right there. That's Penny. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, that's her? And it's like, whoa. I do look like this lady. But she just darker than me. But I'm like, she looks like me. And so she got out the car. And she spent the whole day with us. We went to Waffle House. Got us some waffles later on that day. We, um... Got some Wendy's. I remember that day vividly. Then we came back to the house and she was helping me ride my bike because I did not know how to ride a bike, but she was helping me um, learn how to ride my bike and stuff. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, I like her. She's fun. And like, I would see her like a couple of times throughout my life. It wasn't like constantly, but I would see her like, you know, she'll pop in. And then I would go to my grandma house and that's where my um sister was at, Gary L and I. We have the same mom and dad, but my grandma raised her. And then my other sister, her grandma raised her, and my brother, his dad raised him. So I would go to my grandma house and sometimes she'll be, you know, she'll come over and stuff like that. I know y'all probably gonna say, like, why your dad just couldn't um see about you and this and that. Like I stated, my daddy didn't know anything about no baby, no child, no anything. So it was best for him to just, you know, let my cousin take the lead and take care of me. But I guess what I do remember, my dad would come over there every day. It wasn't like, ooh, who my daddy this and that. My daddy would be at the house every day, play with me. It, it, he didn't miss a beat. He Sometimes he'd spend a night, but yeah, he he was still there when my biological mama finally you know did come around i would see her like, consistently you know throughout my life is when i hit like high school and my mom and i we had some hard times so i had to go stay with her like my 12th grade year and um she really she she really stepped up like i was adamant about going over there because it's just like it's like, I, I don't know. I just felt like I was betraying my mom, but I had to go stay with my biological mama because I, we were just going through some hard times at that point and she was willing to, you know, see about me. I can't say through those times, she was really there for me and I just, you know, it just made our relationship become stronger and closer. And I can't say as I got older, a lot of the issues that I had is stemmed from my biological mama because as I got older, I was able to like really pay attention to a lot of things and really listen to the story. Like when my mom told me the story when I was younger, it was just like, girl, I don't have no other mama. Or it was just like gone. Or it just like, I was just too young to comprehend. So once I got older, I was able enough to soak that information in and just really just think on it. And once I did that, it was like a, I don't know, I kind of got a little sad because I felt like why you didn't want to get clean to be my mama? Why you didn't get yourself together to come see about me? Like, was I that bad that you didn't want to come, you know, get clean and be that mom for me? It was just like, a, it was a lot of that that was going on when I was like, once it really hit me. And it was just like, dang. But I didn't want to show my mama that because she really, she took care of me. She took me in when, you know, I had somewhere to go, but she took me in. But it was just like, dang, I didn't want her to feel like, well, you have a mom here, like, you know, or just, you know, make her feel bad as well. So I just kept my feelings to myself. And I don't want to make nobody feel bad. This is how I felt. This is my thoughts. This is exactly how I felt. 
but some of the issues that I face when it comes to that situation and I feel like it comes from that situation is because I have separation anxiety. Like when I get close to someone, I don't want to let them go because I don't want to make them feel like I'm leaving them because I felt like I was left by my biological mom. I felt like I was discarded. And it's just like, you didn't care or you didn't love me enough to like get clean and just get yourself together to be my mama. That's how I felt. That's, that's just how I felt. And so when it comes to like relationships, friendships, even family that have done me wrong, it's hard for me to let that person go because I didn't, I just don't want them to look at me bad or it's just, I don't know. It's just a lot for a long time. I would say just to, so I won't be the weirdo out the group or I wanted to have kids. But for a long time, I didn't even want to have kids. Even though my mom who raised me, she showed me everything a child should get from a mother. Just everything about me, she instilled that in me. I don't want to take that away from her. But these are, these are my feelings. I just, I didn't know if I wanted to have kids because like would I be a great mama like I don't want my child to feel left or anything how I feel now when I have a child I don't want to make my child feel that way and I'm going to insert this clip that I seen on the breakfast club when um dancing Idris was on there and he said this so I'm going to insert this right here you know that black people have been affected in many ways but crack cocaine was the only thing that made black mothers leave their children. Mm. Wow. Like when I saw that clip, it really messed me up. I, I was crying. Jared was like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, that clip. I mean, what he said really just stuck with me. I don't know. It just really. But my relationship with my biological mom now is amazing. Now, when it was time for me to go to college, my mom and my stepdaddy, they took me to all the stores that I needed to get anything that I needed for college. And I was so grateful because, like I said, my mom was going through a hard time. And they, and she really, like my biological mama, she really, like, she stepped in. Like, she really stepped in and just did the, did the thing. She really did the thing. And I would always just, you know, I would cherish that moment with her. And I don't hold that against her because a lot of people, they go through their own little stuff. I don't know why she, you know, turned down that path. That's her own, you know, her own troubles and her, her own things. But I know what she, you know, she do for me today. And, and what she's been trying to do since she, you know, came to my life. When it comes to her being my mom, I never dis I never disrespect her. I never was like, oh, you no, that's not me. One thing I can say that my mom taught me, she 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 raised me very well. I respect my elders, I respect anybody. You could be a homeless man on the street. I show him the same respect that I would show somebody who's a CEO of a company. Like she raised me so well. Like I I might say she may be a little hard on me, but I appreciate her being hard on me because I wouldn't be here today. What should the first question be? Well, you knew I arranged everything. <laughs> what you mean arranged? I directed all this life here to me. It's something that I wanted. was a queen. Come on, that's a little bit. I'm going to be an old man soon, man. Be something to help you. Quit by Baby, give me some. Help me hold, baby. See, you know them days come, I ain't gonna be as fast as I am now. Look at me now. I'm fast as hell now, but it gonna come a time. I'll be real old. 
and taught it to his baby. Everything. I know this lady here way back way when her mama brought her home from the hospital when she was in the field. I was a young cat myself. This not she was a baby. I was about 11, 12 when she come home. I can't get the exact age when she come home from the hospital. This not a how y'all met. This is about me. Hey, this leading up to you. All this life, you know, all this life living lead up to you. <laughs> Ain't that something? How God can... Work some out right in front of your face. All this led up to the great queen. That's why I named her queen like that. Because I needed help. In my olden age. I thank you, Corvallis. I always will. Now, we're here with we YouTube and everything. Hey, all this out of college fall too now. All this, God shine his light down on college fall. All this. And she did a marvelous job raising her to be the woman that she is today. And I thank God for Pooh. I really, really do. Not only Pooh, but Diane, your mama too. All yeah. of us played part in this raising these children, getting them ready for the world. She was raised by, by some powerful women, some strong women. Tell me, and all this. This family don't run that deep. With his powerful love. Do to me. Gave him a gift. And I know they probably want to know why you couldn't raise me. So you tell them why you wasn't able. I don't know how to do it. I, you need a woman. I said, well, Lord. Pooh. You were there. Who helped me? Yeah, you were there. Pooh helped you raise her. Yeah, you Pooh was did. you was there. I thank God for Pooh. And uh she really she really raised hey. raised her well. And uh it hurt me a lot that I couldn't be there for her. You was there. You were there. But I always told you. Once I got old enough, I can say like, what is that? 11, 12th grade, we, me and my mama, we got very, 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 very close. I had to go stay with her because my other mom, we was going through some financial stuff. So I had to go stay with her and she made sure and him, they they stepped up. I can't say they stepped up. He, I'll be at her house. He'll come pick me up, take me to school every day, drop me back off and stuff like that. When it was time for me to go to college. So Fort Valley, they accepted me last minute. School started, I think, the 15th. I got accepted the 13th. So those two days, my mama and my stepdaddy, they took me to the mall. They got me every and anything I needed for my room. Took me to Best Buy. I no, we went to Sears. She got me everything I needed for my room: bedroom, soup, comforter, bathroom, rugs, everything. And I was obsessed with Hello Kitty. If y'all know me, freshman year, my whole room was decked out in Hello Kitty. They was like, "Oh my God, girl!" 
and then we went to Best Buy on my stepdaddy. He got me a computer, everything. They made sure your girl was good. They made sure your girl was good. And when it was time for me to pack up during the holidays, my daddy and his girlfriend, they would come pick me up. And we did that a couple of times. They always had your girl back. And I'm very thankful for y'all. Pepe raised me, you know it. Daddy, this not that type of video. It's not that type of video. You keep going For on. those who know <laughs> It's not that type of video. It's not that type of video. But if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe to your girl channel. Until next time, I will see y'all later. Hello. Wait, you made me.